Hi, my name is Thomas. I'm going to talk about uh, some of the work that I've done this year with uh, this Amazon service, Private Link, and some of the things that you need to watch out for it. So imagine that you are trying to expose something you've built in AWS to the outside world. You could use the internet. If your compliance requirements or something else prevents you from doing so, you might use one of these options on the right here. Private Link is one of the newest of these options here. And Private Link is unique among these options. Um, it provides it provides one-way communication between a source and a destination in AWS. Um, what this means for Private Link specifically is that a source can connect to a destination, but the, de the destination network can't reach into the source and do anything or inspect anything. All it knows about is this one thing that you've given it to connect to. So it's a great option for service providers. The way that it works is that you, in your account, create what's called a service uh, using a specific type of Amazon load balancer. When you do that, you share that with other AWS accounts. Um, those AWS accounts then can make what are called endpoints from them, which looks a little bit like this. There's a lot of diagrams in these slides. Um, and they, what's cool about that is that they, uh, you can specifically accept or deny these endpoints as your customers create them, so if they only get one, uh, that's fine. Potentially many other accounts can use this load balancer that you've shared with them, which, may, which means that you can expand a single service footprint to a bunch of customers, potentially. Um, which will lead us in a second here into our first problem with Private Link, and that is that there are no tags on any part of this in the Amazon UI. So when you go to create these different parts of it, you can keep track of it by the name of the load balancer that gets created, but if you go into the UI, you're going to see a bunch of nonsense that looks like this. So really, it's imperative that on both ends of this, you're using some sort of infrastructure as code tool to configure these, uh, these resources. Otherwise, you won't know what they are. Um, the second of the challenges with Private Link is that you have to use this very specific load balancer in AWS, which can be a problem if your app relies on some feature of like an ALB or something along those lines, if you're doing custom routing uh, to different targets or whatever. Um, you can get around this in some different ways, such as in this example here, where you could use your other load balancer primarily, but then point the one for the private link service to another place, but this introduces latency and complexity to your infrastructure, and it's just kind of a drag. Um, you could use other load balancers entirely. Um, we use this Lambda solution in a couple places where we have to do something like this, but this is one of the drawbacks to using private link here. Uh, the third issue is by far the biggest one for us here, and that's DNS. Um, and we, we've run into several different cases with our customers who are all internal for private link anyway, where this becomes a problem. And the way to illustrate why this is a challenge for us or a challenge generally is in, in that all of these endpoints that you create for private link come with a set of different IP addresses. So in one VPC, it could be completely different than something in another VPC. They could overlap. Uh, the IPs in any particular network here really don't matter with private link. It also comes with its own set of host names here too. Uh, though it looks like gibberish, the, the first one in this list is the one that people care the most about because it's a C name to all of the zones that this exists in. This becomes a problem for us in the example that you saw a second ago where we have some sort of HTTP API that we want to use TLS over to connect to. You probably want a relatively consistent host name in that case, so you have to figure out some way to do this. What's cool about doing this entirely in AWS is that you can use Route 53's private hosted zones to accomplish this. You make a hosted zone for, your, uh, for whatever zone you need to this host name in and point uh, a C name to the domain that Private Link gives you. The issue that we run into is that not all of our customers use Route 53. Some have Windows DNS and Amazon, some do other things, some have a combination of the two, so we can't just tell them, hey, go make a conditional forwarder or go make this uh, in the amount of time that we need them to for this. Um, so my advice on this point is try to use a unique DNS zone, first of all, that you're not sharing with something else because that introduces other problems. And be prepared for customers who don't use Route 53, either by adopting public DNS, if your compliance stance allows it, um, or just have the conversation with them up front about how you're going to do it because this will save you a lot of time if you end up pursuing this as an option. But it's a very cool thing to use, um, especially if your compliance framework requires it for whatever reason. Thanks.